that's not what that quote says. And if you actually go to the book and you actually read the passage where he talks about it, what he said was that conditions were not right at the time for Palestinians to feel like they could accept that yeah. deal. Now, the bad news for Destiny is I didn't just read the book. I took meticulous notes because I was working on my master's thesis on this subject when this book came out. And sure enough, what he claims about Camp David simply isn't there. This is, by the way, this is the other part of this conversation that like also makes it really, really f annoying. It's literally, it's not even about like the actual debate in that very moment. It's certainly not about the truth. It basically turns into like this secondary thing where the entire fan base will operate in unison to be like, let's go and like bully this dude everywhere about Palestine and Israel. And within just a few minutes of hearing him speak, I realized that Nathan Robinson's description of him as having sub-Wikipedia level knowledge on the issue was actually too generous of Nathan. And what's remarkable is that even though Destiny was clearly out of his depth, that did not shake his confidence one bit. Oh, I mean, that's some real white guy right there. Let's be for real. Projected authority by ridiculing the facts I was bringing up, even though he had absolutely no clue what he was talking about. These so to be clear, you're saying ahead. before that, you're saying that the Israeli official policy was to use human shields that was codified that in the military doctrine. That is, that is That's, official It's so policy. crazy that they so, say that, yet the so only image I've ever seen of the human shield is that one boy on the Jeep that gets posted 50 billion times. Um, that's really funny that he's saying that. I never watched this debate, but like, uh, that's ridiculous that he's saying that. They literally have a consistent policy of in the West Bank utilizing Palestinians that they either sometimes dress up as IDF soldiers as recently as yesterday, or even uh, in general, taking Palestinians in the West Bank and propping them in front of a death squad. They do it all the time. It is nonstop. Um, it, it is like serialized at this point. Um, but once again, the confidence is what matters in this circumstance, especially when a lot of people are unaware, when they're oblivious to the facts of the matter. If you're a confident guy, you're a confident white guy, okay? And you're like kind of rehashing a lot of the information that you get from New York Times. If you're summarizing things that like mainstream media is saying, a lot of people are gonna look at that and go, yeah, I kind of agree with him. Now, the saddest part about this is that as someone who used to be friends with Destiny many, many, many years in the past, um, I remember him genuinely ripping in to this kind of anti-intellectualism. He used to do this when he debated right-wing losers all the time. He used to make fun of them for consistently relying on their own personal anecdotes of watching YouTube videos. Like he would, he would dunk on a lot of right-wing losers who regularly would just try to debate him on the facts of the matter. And instead of looking at actual empirical evidence or like well-documented evidence from human rights groups and Israeli uh, human rights groups alongside like international ones and NGOs in general, uh, they would just say, well, I've seen YouTube videos. And that's a really sad state of affairs as far as like, uh, you know, I don't know, getting up, becoming a worse debater in your old age, I think. Okay. That's what it is. You've become more comfortable. Uh, you have cultivated a, a, a cult-like fandom and you no longer want to actually uh, do the same kind of Wikipedia, B, Wikipedia plus style research that you normally would do that would help you genuinely craft a better argument. A lot of people think that I'm saying this simply because Destiny no longer agrees with me and that's why I'm like shitting on him, but I'm wrong. But the reality is that uh, Wikipedia research is fine, but you need to still push it a little bit further. And even when you're doing Wikipedia research, you can still be clouded by your own emotions and you can still be clouded by your own biases. And we know that he had already made up his mind without knowing anything about Palestine or Israel when he said, ah, genocide is going to happen. I think that's probably the best solution. I'm just joking, but like, whatever, right? That was the, that was the, the, the conclusion that he had arrived at before learning anything about Israel or Palestine. Now, since then, um, he has done a lot of Wikipedia research. Fine. And that's great. And I've said this even in the beginning that like Wikipedia can be good, right? And, and the Israel Palestine situation is so clearly one-sided that anyone that reads enough wikipedia will probably come to that conclusion unless they're incredibly biased you don't even shit on him only the bad takes he says unlike what he does to you yes uh there's a difference i am not interested in the drama side of this if i was i would have talked about the many millions of different things that he has done uh since our separation uh that that you know was incredible keemstar level drama in his own personal life. I don't give a shit about that. I care about the arguments that he's making. Over and over again, but yeah. okay. But confidently dismissing facts doesn't change that they're true. 
Here is a BBC News article about how the Israeli Supreme Court banned the Israeli military from using Palestinian civilians as human shields. The Israeli military establishment and the defense minister protest. Why do you talk about him so much? That's very cute that uh, you're trying to bait me into saying that this is a real thing. Um, this is, uh, I would say that this is not even good enough as far as a counter. It shows that this was definitely a streamlined process, considering that they even chose to ban it. But it's still from 2005. ...that ban because it was useful for them as a matter of policy. And that practice continues even after the ban. Yes. Destiny also claimed that, is that Amnesty International had accused Hamas of using civilians as human shields in 2014. And Do you also acknowledge that they say that, for instance, like Hamas uses human yeah. shields? Yes. Amnesty International says they, that. They, they, they do not. What human rights organizations accuse Hamas of, including Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, is the fact that they operate in civilian areas and hide in civilian areas which endanger civilians. They acknowledge that much. That is not the legal definition of human shield. I've been watching you almost for two years and had to do my own research to find out who he is. Yes, I had a policy of never really talking about him, but in recent in recent times, especially considering that he is like uh, found himself in the midst of this like Israel Palestine conversation, um, I I uh, uh, I can't help but obviously, especially when he's like debating Ben Shapiro and stuff. Well, not debating, agreeing with Ben Shapiro politely and things of that nature. Like there are going to be instances where I look at what he's doing. A lot of right wingers do boost him quite a bit. Um, sometimes because they agree, other times because he dunks on them, but most of the time because they. Uh, agree it was legitimately a sad moment that i thought that the intellectual giant that this person is supposed to be the debate lord of the liberal side basically went and and had a double suck session with ben shapiro that was in my opinion one of the most disappointing things i have seen this person do okay one of the most disappointing things i mean like having an entire cult-like fandom that has harassed me over the course of the past five years, constantly clipping me out of context, creating orbiter communities that also eat good off of the Hassan bad rib cord. All of that stuff is one thing, okay? A lot of people do that. But the worst possible scenario is that like, that is inexcusable. In my opinion, the most act actively trying to deplatform me, that too, having chicken and waffles with Nazis, all this shit is whatever. But fucking agreeing like coming across as agreeable having my fucking normie friends even like that don't know who the fuck he is and and don't really know who the fuck ben shapiro is come up and be like wow dude like uh these guys are like in your space aren't they uh i feel like i feel like ben shapiro fucking destroyed this dude that is that is in my opinion inexcusable completely inexcusable uh anyway it's like anytime i watch him and he's supposed to be presenting himself as like uh a liberal uh you know, duking it out with conservatives, whether it be on Jubilee or whatever. Sad to say that he comes across very agreeable with the conservatives. Yeah, it's telling how much of that comment section is just look at how civil they're being and absolutely nothing of value or any truth seeking was gained from their debate. Yes, I can excuse him trying to destroy my career and character regularly by slandering me almost daily, but I do not, I do not agree with uh, agreeing with Ben Shapiro. I draw that line. That is a major major line to draw the fact that he has had so much smoke for like every random i don't know lefty account that he has declared public enemy number one for years and years and then he gets to all the way to the tippy top you know this is the peak debate lord okay it's like he if he's supposed to be the lebron james of debating and he's now going up against the michael jordan of debating and he just gets fucking dunked on endlessly it's like what the fuck and then turns around and says like, no, nah, it was just like a friendly game anyway. I just rolled over on purpose. I didn't even try my best. <sighs> completely, completely unacceptable. Okay. Like this man moved the conversation over to family values over and over again and just like whipped them around with like silly derailments. That you is the legal definition. Of I know what human rights. Yes. By the way, the human rights watch and Amnesty International, I believe one or the other have said that Hamas uses human shields. That is not uh, false. That is true. Okay, they have said that. Organizations document. Well, yes, you I'm, don't. You clearly you didn't know that in 2014, that. Amnesty International said that Hamas was using human shield. So I again, mean, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, well, I've actually read the reports. You should try it sometime. About. Well, let's look at the Amnesty reports of 2014. Addressing Israel's claims of human shields during the assault, Amnesty International said they have no evidence that Palestinian civilians were intentionally. Yeah, they say that they don't have any evidence at this point that Palestinian civilians civilians have been intentionally used. 
But they say that there's enough in that. I believe in that same report. They say that there's enough. Like it's it's understandable that they uh, the claim is there made by Israel. Shields. After the assault, they issued another report saying that even though Hamas's conduct in yeah, uh, but the major point of contention here is that obviously Gaza is densely packed, and therefore it is uh, not a deliberate act of of the utilization of human shields in the way that Israel declares it, but instead. Uh, more so a, a circumstantial situation. Endangered civilians, it did not necessarily amount to using human shields. Yeah. But more surprising was that Destiny did not have a basic understanding of the core issues in Palestine and Israel. He didn't even understand that Israel's entire presence in the West Bank is considered a military occupation that Israel was obligated to end, and that every last settlement that Israel built in the West Bank is considered for the record, the human shield argument is like also kind of stupid in general. It's one that I, um, it's one that I don't give a shit about as far as like, uh, as far as, uh, you know, what the human rights watch may say, because the reality is human shields are only supposed to fucking work if it's a deterrent. Okay. Israel very clearly is not deterred by the presence of civilians on top of tunnel structures. So the notion that like, the notion that like, oh, it's a human shield. Hamas is using human shields is a fucking ridiculous argument anyway. Okay? That's it. It's just like, it's an optics circumstance, in my opinion. It's just like, um, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Israel literally uses the human shield argument while they have the Hannibal Directive, which implies that they would much rather kill Israeli civilians and citizens in general and soldiers of the IDF instead of letting them become hostages in the hands of militant resistance groups, whether it be Hamas or others. So the notion that they give a fuck about human shields is silly from the jump, okay? Israel has killed people on the West Bank. There's no Hamas in the West Bank. It doesn't matter. Uh, there are militancy groups of resistance, uh, militant resistance groups in uh, the West Bank as well, which, by the way, they have every right to resist. Israel has no right, on the other hand, to go into Gaza and be a belligerent occupier that is blowing up Gaza discriminately, but almost indiscriminately. Um, and just like, just like, Israel certainly has no right to maintain an apartheid state, and Israel definitely does not have a right to maintain an apartheid state in the West Bank. There is no defense for Israel under any circumstance whatsoever, unless you genuinely are, like, super-duper Islamophobic, and do think that, like, Israel's demographic concerns actually outweigh the real liberation of of millions of Palestinians that currently have to exist under the Israeli apartheid regime. That's it. All conversations surrounding Israel should be argued on those boundaries. Is Israel an apartheid state or not? Yes or no? If you believe no, why do you disagree with the actual evidence that Israel is an apartheid state? If you believe that Israel is an apartheid state, why is that not your major point of contention? Why is anything else even a conversation? Like human shields and all this other stuff is just seasoning for the conversation. The major point here, the major violation of human rights law is being done by Israel. Illegal under international law. I think we're missing the forest for the trees here. The idea is Israel's presence in the West Bank is illegal. They have to leave. Uh, well, so that, now we're whether talking... something is legal or illegal, it's not, it's not really at issue here like everything here of the legality of all um well it's it's also immoral the legality over immorality argument only works if something is moral but is being considered illegal like the abolition of slavery slavery at the time was legal but it was still immoral okay you can't you can't neutralize that argument by basically saying oh well yeah everything is legal uh, legal illegal doesn't matter putting that out there that argument only works if you consider Israel's actions to be moral. Do you think Israel's actions are moral or not? Do you think that having an apartheid regime is moral or not? All of, of course this it is. is. And when he did not like what international law has to say, he manufactured complexity and ambiguity where there was none. The entire international human rights consensus and international law consensus on this, which is that Israel's occupation and settlements and wall in the West Bank are absolutely and categorically illegal. Um, I would like to touch on well, a couple so, of other I mean, like, things. again, like, the legality question here, 
first of all, when we're citing like human rights organizations or UN General Assembly, like all the UN General Assembly resolutions are non-binding. When you look at like a resolution like 242, it doesn't even really make sense. Well, first of all, UN Resolution 242 is not a General Assembly resolution. It's a Security Council resolution, and those are legally binding. And second, what does it make sense about it? It's actually pretty straightforward. It cites the inadmissibility of the acquisition of territory by war on calls on- This is why nobody should debate D-Man if you need to put out a tweet to clarify the debate. Yeah, it's just like, the problem is in that very moment, especially if you're like a Muslim dude, a Muslim looking dude, a dude with a Muslim name, if you're an Arab, and you're having a conversation with someone like Destiny, whose community is like geared towards Islamophobia because of his commentary, because let's be real, this isn't to say that like every single Destiny fan, especially in the periphery, is like uh, a, a rugged Islamophobe. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. But you're clearly not bothered by it. You're clearly not bothered by that being the major motivator in this conversation. Someone who has uh, openly admitted that he's Islamophobic. It's not like this is uh, up for debate. He openly says, I'm Islamophobic and it's a good thing. Because I hate Islam, I hate uh, religion, across the board. He does the, ironically, he does the Sam Harris thing that, once again, he used to criticize back in the day. Destiny always used to criticize the likes of Sam Harris and the fence sitters, which he has become himself. If you're like an old school Destiny fan, and there are plenty of them in here right now who aren't massive schizophrenic stalkers, they will agree with you. He used to shit on the likes of Bill Maher, he used to shit on the likes of Sam Harris, who he then has uh, now gone back to his like old school libertarian days and is very much uh, repeating that exact same kind of uh, Islamophobic sentiment. I'm surprised you don't have the same anti-religion take. In my opinion, saying fuck religion is a good position. No, uh, there is more complexity there than what you think, okay? I myself am not a religious person. I think everyone fucking understands that, okay? But I am significantly more open-minded to those who believe in religion, who practice organized religion, as long as those religious values do not transcend other people's personal liberties. That's it. So saying across the board, fuck religion, is kind of silly, especially considering that a lot of people feed into this. Okay? Whether you call it a delusion or not, whether you call it a delusion or not doesn't matter if everyone fucking believes it and it gives them some level of comfort, some level of spiritual comfort and guidance, then who am I to judge? People believe in dumb shit all the time. Religion is a tool. It's ideology. It's just like anything else. It's a weapon that you can wield if you would like. Religion has been on both sides of the slavery conversation. On the one hand, religion in the United States of America, Christianity specifically, was used to uphold white supremacist chattel slavery and its practices. Religion also, on the other hand, was a for played a formative role in the abolition of slavery. Slavery Liberation theology is a huge component. In the abolition of slavery, John Brown was also a little bit of a nutter, but personally, uh, you know, very religious, but had the right idea. The Bible was used to justify slavery. It's so tons of pro-slavery passages. Yes, I know. I already mentioned that. But then also the Bible was utilized in the abolition of slavery. Do you understand? I'm, I'm using that as an example, right? Martin Luther King Jr., reverend, also an advocate of liberation theology. He says he's Islamophobic, but won't say he's anti-Semitic lol. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, because one is like actually permissible. He's said plenty of anti-Semitic things as well uh, in, in jest as a joke. But he's also very pro-Israel, so I'm pretty sure people don't care about his anti-Semitism. As many ultra-Zionists excuse anti-Semitism from other ultra-Zionist anti-Semites. <sighs> yeah, um, I think a lot of people should. A lot of people would do better if they uh, personally, um, if they personally readily acknowledge that, like, sure, there are some progressive values that Destiny sometimes will advocate for, but by and large. He is uh, oftentimes a, exactly like Sam Harris, a fence sitter who will always defend America's actions as far as its foreign policy, and oftentimes is very hypocritical in his approach to that sort of thing. And that's it. How does the phrase ultra Zionist anti Semite make sense? Uh, Victor Orban is an ultra Zionist anti Semite. Ann Coulter is an ultra Zionist anti Semite. These people believe in the existence and the uh, violent dominance of the state of Israel as a state for Jews and Jews only. Uh, they are, however, also virulently anti-Semitic. They 
will oftentimes say things such as Jews control the media and blah, blah, blah. The reason why they believe that, okay, the reason why they believe these things is partially, what? Caesar's response to this video was simply, you said, you said, you wrote a master's thesis on this issue. Why don't you publish it online? He didn't even make an effort to show why he's right in the face of facts. Yes. The issue, however, is that there's a reason why Ben Shapiro is hailed as a debate lord champion. Okay? Because when you are assuming the position of the dominating narrative, okay, and certainly the dominating narrative, regardless of what you think, regardless of the TikToks that you watch or whatever, in the United States of America, the dominant narrative is that Israel is doing the right thing, Israel is the right to defend itself, and the Arabs are, you know, barbaric hordes that must be, uh, must be, be ripped apart and treated in a violent manner because that's the only language they understand. This is the overarching dominant narrative. Reactionary arguments are much easier to conduct, okay? Because you can just simply turn around and point to the things that are already there that are uplifting this narrative and go, it's just common sense. Look, the, way I'm, the reason why I'm going into depth here and trying to describe it um, as best as I possibly can is that that is precisely the reason why Ben Shapiro has a major fan base. Okay? Exactly what you're doing. If you think that anything that I have actually mentioned here is the dominant narrative, you probably don't go outside too much and you think that, like, everyone around you is a, is a rugged communist or something. Why can't you stand a subject for more than 20 seconds? Exactly what you're doing. I don't know what you mean by that. I think you're the one who's trying to derail me, but it's not working. Let's continue. And Israel to withdraw from the occupied territories. But deflecting was Destiny's weapon of choice. Whenever he would recognize that he was losing the argument, he would either try to change the topic... Why is it that Jordan but, doesn't seem to I, care about the border controls? Could it have to do with the fact that in 1970, the PLO and Arafat literally tried to kill the Jordanian king? Or he would dive into a level of detail that's just completely pointless. And either you chase him down that rabbit hole and lose the point you're trying to make, or else he would cleverly accuse you of not wanting to engage the details, allegedly because you're uninformed. 13,000 to 14,000 uh, new houses, housing units were constructed every single year. And then from, I think it was from 94 or 93 to, I think it was to 97, it, that number was like less than 5,000. It was only new housing units that were being constructed. I mean, just, just for clarity's sake, I feel like we can get into the weeds on this. We absolutely I want to get into the weeds. That's where yeah. I want to go. Yeah. Yeah. We can go very into the weeds. I think it's very important yeah. to get into the weeds on this. So even in you places where I know that you keep saying that. This is hilarious. They don't want to get lost in the weeds. They don't want to really deal with is. the history. You just don't know the facts. Now, if you want to know the exact number of how many thousands of housing units Israel built in settlements, or how many new settlements, or how many new outposts, you can just go to Peace Now's website and see. Dude, it's like I've had to debate a bunch of anti Doshi losers who have the same circular logic. Yeah, in so many of these circumstances, it literally is just like you make up your mind. Uh, it's even better if you have like, um, it, it's even better if you have uh, uh, the the domineering narrative that is backing your assessment here regardless of what the facts are right um all you need to do at that point is just like find a couple of gotchas like and and drive or try to steer the conversation towards those gotchas and just keep hammering that over and over again okay in the broader picture in the broader picture none of this is is even remotely important because like I said, it still goes back to the same point at hand, which is that Israel has not offered a, a con contiguous uh, or, or a nation state with contiguity to the Palestinians in the West Bank as international law demanded that they do that. Instead, they have broken up Palestinian communities in the West Bank where they are illegally in operation. Okay? Contiguous. Yes. I think I said it right. Did I not say it right? Anyway, whatever. Ultimately, you can try to, uh, to, to, to laser in on certain aspects. Like uh, one thing that Hasbro trolls used to do back in the day was, well, Palestinians are, well, they wouldn't say Palestinians are fucking dogs or whatever openly. Now some of them do, but back then they didn't. They would simply say, well, Palestinians don't know what to do. With the greenhouses, we left them greenhouses behind and they destroyed it, okay? It was a chaotic situation. The pullout was military-led. It was a chaotic situation. And the settlers themselves in Gaza were the ones who destroyed many of the greenhouses. And the Israeli government did not help the Palestinian government at the time 
uh, in, in their efforts to save the greenhouses, okay, and shut off water access to those greenhouses anyway. So, yeah, on the one hand, you could just turn around and say, well, uh, you know, uh, Arabs are dogs and they don't know how to fucking deal with greenhouses. They don't know what a good thing is, okay? Or you can actually look at the facts of the matter. Now, many people might not know the full story. Maybe they only heard the greenhouse story from the likes of Ben Shapiro. So they get worried in that very moment on how to respond to it. Okay? Maybe you didn't know about that. Maybe you didn't know the, the other side of that story, rather. Okay? But that doesn't change the reality on the ground. And it certainly does not change Israel's apartheid regime. Even if the uh, Palestinians themselves destroyed the greenhouses, they were like, we're so angry. Fuck Israel. I'm destroying this greenhouse myself. That still does not make it right. That still does not make what Israel has done right. Okay, no amount of like Palestinian blame will justify the much greater issues that Israel has caused upon the Palestinian population. Okay, see it all broken down in charts, but none of it changes the fact that all of this construction is illegal and all of it is an infringement on Palestinians' right to their land. And another tactic he used is whenever he could not defend Israel's indefensible policies, he would crack jokes. Did you know that at the beginning of the blockade, potato chips were not allowed in? Sodas were not allowed in. Cookies were not allowed in. Pasta. Can you explain to me what threat cookies pose to Israel from your perspective? Well, uh, if they're the Keebler Elf ones, it's like 200 calories a cookie, so maybe they just didn't want people getting fat. But the most interesting exchange was about me accurately quoting Israeli foreign minister. Why won't you watch the debate instead of watching this bad face summary of the debate? It's because I'm terrified of ben, Sh uh, ben Shapiro's intellectual might is what I was going to call it. I called him Ben Shapiro. Oh, my God. It's because I'm terrified of Destiny's intellectual might, I think. I'm watching this because it's a condensed nine minute version. Um, and two, I don't really care. I don't really care to watch the entire thing because I've heard all of these talking points a million times over. Um, I like this guy. I think this guy's very knowledgeable. I'm going to go along with his opinion on the debate more than uh, listening to a two hour fuck fest, I guess, of Destiny basically doing exactly what he is responding to, exactly what he's pinpointing every single step of the way. There's Shlomo Ben Ami. When he said so you're watching it specifically because it's chimped yes if that is the, the the maximum amount of copium that you can live with in your mind like this this is the only copium that hassan you're too scared of the truth that destiny brings to the table even though i have addressed every single talking point that destiny has read and learned in the last two months uh in the last two months for the past 10 years i would say um you know if that's what if that's gonna make you feel better about the situation then yeah go ahead that had he been Palestinian, he would not have accepted Israel's offer at Camp David too. Camp David was not the missed opportunity for the Palestinians. They literally do this to your 30 seconds clip yet calling you a clip chimper for watching a nine minute response with research. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and watch uh, a two hour conversation or however long it fucking took uh, between these two. OK, and sit there and go through the minutia every single time. I know his shtick. I've debated him in the past. Oh, I am I am not oblivious to his ways. Oh, so you just know what he'll say with your precog? That must be nice. Brother, I'm not debating you, okay? Let me tell you one thing. I might have my disagreements with Destiny, and I know where he, where the where he's, you know, out of his element, right? This is one of those issues where he's not knowledgeable on the matter, but has like been able to at least haphazardly craft some talking points that come across like good in that moment. Okay. But you, my friend are not even a shitty copy, okay? A lot of people that watch Destiny think that they also can do that. Like, they think that they can also debate in the same way, okay? But in most circumstances, all you're doing is being fucking annoying, okay? You're just not. You're not him. Like, sorry. At least he does the research to get the fucking talking points. You know what I mean? You don't do that. You got nothing. You got no juice. So all you do is, uh, you know, behave in this like incredibly, incredibly annoying fashion. Okay. I don't know his point. So I think it'd be useful to hear it. No, you do know. Okay. You're being annoying as fuck. All you're doing in the situation is just to like try to agitate me. So I respond to you so you can clip chimp it and then send it fucking back. It's insufferable. Oh, this is why I call you motherfuckers debate pedophiles because you're not in it for the truth, even though you try to behave like you are actually searching for the truth or whatever. But in real, but the reality is you just want to fucking behave 
like a debate pedophile. You just want to like keep continuing the conversation down like different uh, uh, different points that is completely removed from the main point of contention now. And if I were a Palestinian, I would have rejected Camp David as well. This is after something. After this, we're going to move on to. Um, um, after after this, we're going to move on to fun. By reacts. putting the book. The quote from the debate is extremely clear and straightforward. But in a desperate attempt to deflect, Destiny says that instead of believing your eyes and ears, what you should do is go read the book so that you would understand that the quote actually means something else. People accuse me of not knowing anything about this topic, but then I understand when you're debating things like this, you don't know anything about the topic. And that's why you get upset when, when you talk about like getting in the weeds. Mm -hmm. Even that quote that you gave earlier um, from the Israeli foreign minister about how like, I wouldn't have accepted the deal if I was a Palestinian at the time. That's not what he said. That's not what that quote says. And if you actually go to the book and you actually read the passage where he talks about it, what he said was that conditions were not right at the time for Palestinians to feel like they could accept that yeah. deal. Now, the bad news for Destiny is I didn't just read the book. I took meticulous notes because I was working on my master's thesis on this subject when this book came out. And sure enough, what he claims about Camp David simply isn't there. Now this is where it gets really funny. Destiny further embarrasses himself by tweeting a video at me made by one of his clueless followers mocking me because he thought that it proved me wrong about this quote. Check it out. I think it's important to engage in good faith and to know what you're talking about and to not say things that you don't understand. I've watched that debate with Israel's foreign minister. This is, by the way, this is the other part of this conversation that like also makes it really, really f annoying. It's literally, it's not even about like the actual debate in that very moment. It's certainly not about the truth. It basically turns into like this secondary thing where the entire fan base, the entire fan base will operate in unison to be like, let's go and like bully this dude everywhere. To this, to this day, you will always see like under the replies of every f Twitter post that I have, like a ton, maybe 10 people being like, uh, <laughs> remember when you justified rich people? I never did that. Okay. It is literally an edited clip that is completely ridiculous. And it's so ridiculous that most people probably look at that and go, okay, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. This is, this is bullshit. No matter who destiny debates his fandom will do the same exact thing okay and if you have been in this game for a very long time as i have okay you know that this is exactly what the alt-right used to do this is like peak 4chan shit all of the dumb bitches like the the sargon of a and the paul joseph watsons and the and and the the like all of the gamergate era andys that destiny ironically used to fucking defeat in the marketplace of ideas in intellectual blood sport, they did the exact same shit. This is what they would do. The lore about the Crimea annexation, you keep saying slurs, you buying a house, all the dumb shit. Yeah, they do that all the time, nonstop. And I think it's because like he bested a lot of these guys in the marketplace of ideas and they, yeah, they, they basically followed uh, Destiny into whatever battle that he would go into and they still operate in the same way. You didn't actually like reform your way of thinking. You didn't actually change your mentality. You're just basically still in it for the battle. You're basically still in it for the blood sport. Yeah. He used to make fun of these guys and the tactics. And now he's doing the same shit from sometimes the identical position. Why are people so threatened? I really don't get what they have to gain. I think it's just fun. I, I, I like, I, I thought about this a lot. I saw that reply, watched the clip because I was curious. It was so obviously not what you're saying. Yeah. I think that I think that it it creates a sense of community. It fosters a sense of belonging. It creates a sense of community. It makes you feel smart too. Like a lot of people think that uh, besting another in a debate, even if you're like gish galloping, even if you're using, uh, even if you're using like silly little uh, logical fallacies in your conversation, most people, um most people don't really think about that right they just they they want to feel smart they want to it's the same reason why you watch me and then repeat a lot of the things that i'm saying to your friends because you want to come across knowledgeable and smart to your friends that's it um i try to maintain the position that you can do that but at least like you know do a little bit further reading which many of you do engage in the real world which many of you do and more importantly than that uh at the very least be fucking normal, okay? Don't be annoying. Don't try to constantly fucking best people intellectually. I think that that makes you a really unlikable person. On more than one occasion, 
What he was saying is that the deal that was offered to Palestinians at the end of Camp David was a bad deal, and if he were Palestinian, he would not have accepted it. And that's that literally not what he said. If you watch the debate, and I watched it, that debate, okay. it was literally not hosted on Democracy so, Now!, and he's quoting his own book. And if you go back and read the book instead of just watching mm -hmm. a YouTube video, you'll see the context of what was given. This community often uses those Gamergate tactics and chimping in digging up dirt for leftists, but when he argues with the right wingers, this community is all about how civil the debate was and bridge building and shit. I know, which is interesting because, like, I don't think that people recognize, like, what their politics are. I think that a lot of people in Destiny's community genuinely think that they themselves are progressive and they think that Destiny is progressive. Also, the information I think that they just posted was from a different, um, I didn't even get, I didn't even catch it, but I'm pretty sure the information that they just posted on that subreddit is from a different, uh, deal. Yeah. Papa is a different summit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I it, So yeah, I did catch it. Never mind. I, I thought like, look at this. <laughs> And that's that lit Taba is a different summit. And also the Israeli delegates are the ones who withdrew because of the elections. Yeah. But, but again, when, when people are, when everyone is dumb, it barely, it doesn't matter. It doesn't register. People literally think they're winning. They think they're winning the argument. That's the whole point. This is what I'm trying to say. This is how conservatives operate. This is the danger. And it's not even about destiny. Okay. At this point, this is simply about the danger of reactionary thinking and how reactionary thinking stunts your your intellect it stunts your intellectual curiosity okay because reactionary thinking is all about shutting off the other side and like trying to understand the other side's rationale okay it is it's it's super dishonest yes it is super dishonest because there's no consequences for being wrong. They can be wrong and still win as long as they believe it's enough. Yes. And there's also plenty of things that you can dominate your opponent on. Right? Like, for example, I can cut hours and hours and hours of, of, uh, of, of coverage on Israel-Palestine. I can bring Knesset members. I can bring on conscientious objectors. I can bring on scholars. I can bring on journalists. That have, I can bring on activists, right? But all it takes is like for someone to be like, well, remember when you thought it was a JDAM without seeing the impact crater? That's it. And then you can hammer that point over and over again. It's a very disingenuous way to make it seem as though like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. When you don't ever have to demonstrate that you know what the fuck you're talking about at all. Right? And, and then people will turn around and say, damn, that hurt you, lol. No, it didn't. Because it's ridiculous. It is a ridiculous assessment anyway. Like, you didn't address anything. You didn't address my point. But it made you feel like you won because guess what? Oh, we made him sad. We made him upset. Even if he's not upset, in this very moment, I can feel like he's upset. One must always ask themselves, what does this do for me? Like, does that make you feel good? Does that make you feel like you've learned more? about an issue, right? Did that make my life worse? Probably not. This is another thing that I always try. This is another thing that I always try to get people uh, to, to recognize. I'm a firm believer that all of my haters, no matter how unhinged they are, okay? All the people that come in here every single day, no matter how unhinged they are, will be able to snap out of it. You will. One day you will recognize that the behavior that you are uh, channeling and the behavior that you're exhibiting online is not healthy for you. There are plenty of others just like you that have come into this community with that same perspective, that have come into this community with hatred and with the opportunity to be like, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck you up intellectually. I'm going to say something. Uh, that will really piss you off. And then they stick around. They stick around. They sometimes find that I am more agreeable than they previously thought. And then they start changing their mentality. I believe that you can do that too. They still claim you said you do on the ground reporting. I don't know when you say that. Um, it's probably, I probably misspoke. 
uh, and they clipped it and act like I uh, go around telling people that I do on the ground reporting or something. I don't even remember where it's from, but I obviously very clearly don't do on the ground reporting. I do talk to reporters on the ground. You say it ironically when you IRL stream or maybe that could be that. <sighs> could be that I said it sarcastically. Ultimately, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, dude, there are a lot of people who also have like clipped me making fun of the queen dying and then uh, interlaced that footage with like me crying when talking about Shirin Abu Akhle, okay? You're not a very nice person if you can't understand why one would be infinitely more emotional than the other. One is a grave injustice. The other is a, you know, 900-year-old person who died after living a pretty good fucking life. The other is a, is a very important journalist that was assassinated by the Israeli state and lied about, whose funeral was also then attacked by the Israeli occupying force. If you can't understand the, the injustice there, well, I don't know what to tell you. I think that it probably comes mostly from... I think it probably comes from the fact that, to you, neither really matters. But... To you, what matters is maybe you're making a funny joke or winning the argument somehow. I came here from that community four years ago. Now I was just in high school. I thought a new shit, but this community humbled me. I built my beliefs and can think for myself. There you go. And That's that, literally not what he said. If you watched the that, debate, and I watched it, that debate, okay. it was literally not hosted on Democracy so, Now! And he's quoting his own book. And if you go back and read the book instead of just watching mm -hmm. a YouTube video, you'll see the context of what was given. And what was yeah, given we'll, was that... We'll Palestine... make that available. I'm, okay. glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're saying that. I think we're going to be able to clip this up. I'm okay. going to clip up that part of the debate. We'll sure put thing. it up there with the quotes of the book, which I have sitting on my shelf. I'm happy to do all of this. Okay. That's pretty cute, but the problem is that the confused person who made this video grabbed book quotes not about the Camp David offer that I was referencing, but about a different set of negotiations at Thaba. And the reason why that distinction is really important is because the Camp David offer that I referenced and that Ben Ami said he would not accept had he been Palestinian. I love that motherfuckers are like, wow, wow, what a bad faith clip chimping operation here. Like, dude, this is not a bad faith clip chimping operation. It just demonstrates that a lot of the fan base legitimately is just like simply looking for anything that gives them the opportunity to go, aha, you were wrong, I was right. But if you were to actually, I don't know, genuinely do a little bit more research, do a little bit more reading, you would recognize that you're wrong. Stop just hitting control F and looking for keywords and then uh, look for a quick gotcha. The, the problem here is that you end up you end up looking like morons to actual knowledgeable people, okay? Sure, if the overarching, uh, if the overarching narrative is is not uh, that uh, knowledgeable people are are um, actually correct, maybe it makes you feel like you're in the right, but you're not. In that situation, you are technically no different than the conservatives, and they're. Uh, a cult like clip chimping is when you check quotes in a book. Oh, I, I, yeah, okay, you're making fun of this guy, uh, or not making fun of this guy, you're making fun of the dudes that were saying that. It, it's just like the point is, there are a shit ton of conservatives who lack critical thinking skills, okay? And they think that they're in the right. And they get together in their own fucking communities and think that they're like super right. And then Ben dukes it out. Ben Shapiro dukes it out with like college campus students. And then they get more reinforced. Like, oh, we are so in the right. Okay. Destiny is pretty good at debating. So he can actually tackle an issue with an actual knowledgeable person and still come across as like confident enough that you, if you are not knowledgeable, will think he's in the right especially if he's uh, also feeding into your own inherent biases. That's it. But I think it will, I think you are going to, if you have this mentality, you are going to inevitably be in the wrong in a lot of circumstances. You'll still, 
I mean, you can find plenty of people who will feed into this, though, because there are many there are many more people out there who believe that what Israel is doing is like totally permissible, totally just or whatever. But you're still not going to be correct. So if you do want truth, okay, if you do want to arrive at the truth, then you should investigate it further on your own. Instead of just like looking at uh, two people spitting out talking points. Happened in the summer of 2000, several months before the Intifada. Whereas the harsh conditions being referenced in the book here in this video, talk about conditions being created by the Intifada that made future negotiations and an agreement more difficult for Palestinians to accept. So those conditions could not have possibly been in reference to the Camp David offer that Ben Ami was talking about in this quote, because the Intifada had not happened yet. And yet, Destiny is so clueless that he just doubled down on his obvious error. And he's such a grifter that he even tried to take credit for having guessed what interview I got this Ben Ami quote from, even though I had already mentioned the source when I first shared the quote with him. And by the way, if Destiny knows Ben Ami's book so well, he probably would have noticed that in it, Ben Ami proves almost every argument that Destiny himself spent our entire debate trying to deny. And what's remarkable is that there is a cult-like quality to social media today that is immune to counter evidence, whether it's Destiny or Alex Jones. At least it's not admits when he gets something wrong. Usually I always admit when I get something wrong. Or any other grifter who gains prominence by peddling nonsense to a large and loyal fan base. It really highlights that we're in a post-truth environment. It's why even someone like Lex Friedman, in a well-meaning attempt to enhance understanding about Palestine and Israel, finds himself trying to host a debate between actual experts, like Moeen Rabbani and Norman Finkelstein on one hand, and then a clueless YouTuber like Destiny being thrown in the mix. Because grifters are actually good at sounding like they know what they're talking about. Yeah. And it takes real knowledge and effort to tell experts and charlatans apart. So, um, the last point I'm going to make on this, uh, the last point I will say on this is, is that I have had a long-standing belief, okay, a long-standing belief that debates are pseudo-intellectual wrestling, okay? It's theater for the most part. It can have utility. It can break you from, uh, from your, your linear thinking when you are met with some reasonable ideas, reasonable counter uh, reasonable counters to the way that you thought the world was, okay? And it can also be a good way to reinforce talking points so you can go duke it out with other people, right? But ultimately, debates are not won by those who have all of the evidence or those who are simply correct. Debates are won by people who are better at rhetoric than the other party. And the argument that I always use for this is if Ben Shapiro were to debate a climate scientist, a shy climate scientist, let's say, maybe the climate scientist is uh, neurodivergent, insecure, shy, not very good on camera. He could come across like he is destroying the climate scientist, but that would not mean that he's actually in the right at all. Okay. No, the notion that you think Hassan feeding makes no arguments. YouTube is direct action. What is makes no arguments? YouTube Ben would get slapped. This is not true. This is not true at all because Ben has strong rhetoric. Even if he is completely in the wrong. You don't even have to use a hypothetical. This is what happened to Dr. Sanjay Gupta when he went on Joe Rogan. I don't know who Sanjay Gupta debated. Being shy or awkward doesn't mean lo losing true. No, Ben. Whoever is more charismatic, whoever has like a better set of talking points, whoever is, is better at rhetoric, will always be able to move the conversation in a direction that they want to move it. That's it.